Hey, and thank you for watching the Screen Mapper tutorial. Screen Mapper is a new After Effects extension for building multi screen display templates. It works with even just a few displays, but really excels when working with many more. Design your screen template within the extension and export that to After Effects where Screen Mapper will build it for you, creating all the comps needed for previewing, animating, and mapping each individual display. When you've exported your Screen Mapper template to After Effects, you will have something like this. So here on the left is the Screen Mapper extension. It's got eight displays that I've already added and positioned. And over here on the right is the After Effects project that Screen Mapper has built. Now Screen Mapper builds a few different compositions, and at the top we've got our preview composition, which is what we're in now. Inside that we've got a couple of different layers, including our master controller. And this is where we've got the ability to toggle things like borders, display IDs, and pixel maps if we've chosen to include them. We've also got a guide layer and a display composition layer for each of the displays that we've added. Now on the master controller, if I just untoggle pixel maps for a second, and you can see over here in screen mapper we've got display one, and then in our composition we've got our display one composition and then display two in screen mapper is display two over here and so on and so forth. In the project panel screen mapper puts all of our display comps into a display comps folder and our main comps into a main comps folder. Inside each display comp is an animation composition and this is where we're going to be doing all of our big animations and all of our big takeovers that will get mapped across all the different screens. Now if I drop in some footage of these pulsating circles and just play this, you can see that plays nicely and above it is our guide layer which shows us what's going to be shown on each screen. Now if we head back to our preview composition and press play, you can see Screen Mapper's done all the hard work, positioning all the animation layers and setting it up correctly. And if I just toggle the transparency, you can see that there's nothing behind it. And if we, for example, just check out display three, over here in screen mapper, it should be 500 by 500 pixels. And over in the project panel, the display three composition is 500 by 500 pixels wide. And if we look in relation to the animation layer, we can see that it's positioned it correctly. And if we check out display two, the animation layer has been positioned slightly differently to make sure it's in the right place for our mapping. Now let's delete all of this and close Screen Mapper and start from scratch. Once you've installed Screen Mapper, you can find it by going to Windows, Extensions, Screen Mapper. Now the extension is responsive, so as you resize it, it will adjust accordingly, showing and hide icons depending on how much space you've given it. Now Screen Mapper is split into two main sections. At the top is the toolbar and below it is the canvas. The toolbar is split into four main sections, which is app controls, align controls, canvas controls, and display controls. Clicking each one of these does a certain action, and hovering over each button shows a tooltip, and also a keyboard shortcut as well. So for example, toggle grid is semicolon, and as I tap semicolon, it toggles the grid on and off and hitting Control r toggles the rulers. Now to navigate the canvas, you can either zoom in with the scroll wheel, or hold down space, click and drag allows you to pan around the canvas. Now if at any point you've lost your canvas or you're too zoomed in and you can't see what you're doing properly, clicking this button Reset View will restore the canvas to fit the screen. Now when you load Screen Mapper, it will start with an empty canvas, and you can change these default settings in the preferences. And to navigate to these preferences, you can go Screen Mapper Preferences. And here we're able to set the default values for a variety of different things. The default width and height of the canvas, the default spacing controls for gutters, snapping and edge detection, as well as the zoom properties for minimum zoom, the maximum zoom, and the speed at which you zoom in. Over on the Displays tab, you're able to update IDs and choose between cycling through random label colors. Screen Mapper has hotkeys for adding display dimensions that you use a lot. And you can set these defaults 
under the quick display dimensions. The After Effects tab shows you settings for when After Effects, like the default duration of your comps and the default frame rate, creating guides, locking the position of your compositions, and adding that shape layer pixel map preset. So back in the main window, you can edit the current project under the project settings modal. Here we can set a name and we'll call this screen mapper demo. Two. We can choose to add a gutter and the gutter is essentially the amount of space or distance between each display. So we'll set that to 25. Snapping is the minimum amount of space between two displays before they snap together. And edge detection is the same, but with the edge of the canvas. And all this is done in pixels. Here we can set our canvas width and height, add a background image if we want to, and set the duration and the frame rate for the project. But this is looking good. I'll leave this okay for now. Alternatively, you can load the, a new project via the main menu, where you can either import from file or choose an existing project that you've saved already. And the main menu is also where we can create a new project, export to file, or export to AE. So back into our project, let's add a display. Here we can choose the X position, Y position, width and height, and set the label color for the display. Let's keep these as defaults for now. And this should allow us to create a 500 by 500 display in the top left corner. Clicking the add or update display button will add a display to the canvas. And if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see we've just added our first display, which is 500 by 500. You can click and drag it around the canvas and you can see that we're constrained to the limits within inside the canvas. So we can't drag it off the screen. Looking at the display in the top left corner, we can see the position and the big O1 is its ID. 500 by 500 shows us the width and height. We can scale the display from one of these handles in the corners or sides, make it bigger or smaller. Now, if we want to update this display, make sure it's selected, enter your value and clicking the add update button again, will this time update it. And this is the same with the label button. If you want to change its color, just pick a color and click it and it will update the label. You just have to make sure that the current, that the display you want to update is selected. Now, another way to move displays around the screen is with keyboard shortcuts. And these are done with the W, A, S, and D keys. Hitting W moves the display up, A goes to the left, S goes down, and D goes to the right. Kind of like the gaming keys. Now, if no displays are selected, and we enter some values into the toolbar and click the add update display, it's gonna add a new display. But if we do have a display, selected and we enter some values in and click it it's going to update that selected display now i'm just going to toggle snapping and I, as i move this display around the screen you can see as i get close to the second display it snaps into position and i can't move it into position any further and we've also got a little gap between the two displays and that's because we've set our gutter to 25. If i was to get rid of that and change it to zero and now move it along you can see that it snaps straight to it. And that's because there's no gutter. Now, a couple more ways you can modify these displays is with keyboard shortcuts. Tapping L changes the label color and you cycle through the different label colors and Shift L cycles backwards. Now, if you want to delete a display, you can do it with the backspace button on the keyboard. Or if I just undo with this button here, you can delete it with this little rubber tool and if I just undo again, you can see we can undo all the actions we've made and redoing, redoes all of the actions that we've done as well. And the keyboard shortcuts for this are Control Z and Shift Z to redo. Now, a really cool feature of Screen Mapper is the ability to duplicate displays. And this is going to be so helpful for these bigger projects. Now, let's say you've got your blueprints or your designs and it, and it consists of many of the same type of screen with the same dimensions. What we can do is duplicate it really quickly. And you do that by holding shift and using the keyboard shortcuts to move the displays to duplicate it in that direction. Now, to make this a little bit more clear, let me just make this back into a square, we'll say 300 by 300. And I'll pop that in the middle. Now, if I want to duplicate up, 
I can hold Shift and W, and it's going to duplicate that display identically above it. If I want to duplicate to the right is Shift D, down is Shift S, and left is Shift A, and we've just gone over our first display. But let's delete that. Now what you'll see at the moment is it's duplicated everything, including its label color. But if we just undo, go back to our preferences, under displays, click random labels. Now let's try this again. What's going to happen now is if we keep duplicating, it's going to create the same identical display, but this time with a random label color. And that helps to differentiate between each display. Cool. So now we've got our final displays. Let's just reposition them to give us a bit more of a cool look. All right, that's looking good. What I'm going to do now is save the project. I can do that by clicking the Save button or Control S. And what this means is if we close the extension and we want to open this project at a later time, it's still here. And you're able to find it again by going to the main menu and under existing projects, you'll be able to see it in the list here. All right, so let's export this screen map of project to After Effects. I'm just going to bring our composition window over a little bit. So you go over to the main menu and click Export to AE. Do you want to save this first? No, I've already saved it. And just like that, Screen Mapper has added the displays, it's created the compositions, it's created our template for us, and it was super, super quick to do. Let's go over to the project panel. It's added our display comp folder and our main comp folder with our animation composition, guides, and preview compositions, as well as our six different display compositions. Now, if we just go to our preview composition and our master controller, we can toggle the pixel map layer off and then go to our animation composition and drop in our pulsating circles footage and play that. That's how it should look. And jump a couple levels up to our preview composition. You can see that's now mapped across all of our different screens perfectly. And if you just hide borders and hide displays, play that again. It's looking really cool. Great. So the really good thing about the way this is set up is you can either do all your big takeovers in the animation composition, or you do have the ability to do individual smaller animations specific to each screen inside each display composition. And this means you don't have to worry about aligning anything up, aligning positions up. It's all done for you. And it gives you the option to either export as one big file or export as each individual screen, whatever you guys prefer or whatever the deliverables require. So I think that brings us to the end of the first screen mapper tutorial. I hope you liked it. Check out the next one for working with background images.